Ah, stealth games. Mossad's favorite and a great training tool for those of us who realized that most of humanity is best avoided. There's nothing quite like sneaking around and completely avoiding other humans, or knocking out those in the way without ever being noticed, or, even better, making sure accidents happen. We all know Splinter Cell, Thief and Hitman, but did you know that in 2003 a team of Slovaks used the Mafia engine to create a stealth masterpiece? That game was called Chameleon, yet despite its earth-shattering quality, it only saw a limited release in Russia, Poland and Czechoslovakia, and even then, only two years after development was complete, in 2005. Thanks to the efforts of dedicated Slavic code wizards and translators, there is also an unofficial English patch, link in the description. After you install the game, heroically battle Star Force and crack the game, so you can play the damn thing without it bricking your computer, and install the English files, you are greeted with the game's launcher, and are given a few options. The game supports widescreen and is fully playable that way, though annoyingly, it's yet another one of those games that zooms in the picture, restricting your vertical field of view, rather than expanding your horizontal one, and it stretches the UI as well. Thankfully, the game's field of view is so wide that even with the reduced real estate, the game is still fully playable. Unlike Mafia, there are no fan-made field of view or widescreen fixes, though given the game's limited release, we, the unworthy non-Slavs, should be grateful for its English version existing in the first place. But enough of this nerdy shit. Got a modern computer? Enjoy running the game at 100 FPS. In Chameleon, you play as the yeah, ideal Eastern ideal. European as he tries to get a hold of the man that killed his parents several decades after the fact. Due to his autistic persistence in trying to get a hold of this information, he becomes a CIA agent, but is almost just as quickly kicked out of the force due to stealing classified information. The documents turn out to be exactly what he was looking for though, and the global hunt for his parents killer ensues. The story is essentially a detective mystery complemented by thrilling stealth gameplay. And the more you play, the more you'll want to uncover, particularly since unlike most other boring Western games, in Chameleon you will sneak in locations such as Albania, Lebanon, Moldova, and Colombia, just to name a few. The level variety is excellent, and the levels themselves contain a good mix of indoor and outdoor environments, with missions taking place both during daytime and nighttime. There's always a sight to behold in this game, even considering its age. But let's not forget, Chameleon is a game, a stealth action one. And how's the action? Well, pretty goddamn hard. Due to the game using the Mafia engine, shooting is janky as fuck, and neither you or your enemies are particularly accurate. But herein lies the genius. The developers themselves figured out their shooting mechanics kind of suck, and added in a visibility meter, just like in games like Thief or Splinter Cell. They also made it so, whenever you're near an enemy, you will hear the protagonist's heartbeat, which is either louder or quieter, depending on your distance to one. Thus, genocide isn't your only option. You can also sneak past most enemies, and if you're careful enough, ghosting certain levels is genuinely feasible. Some encounters do favor one approach over the other, with some being outright designed around just one approach, but overall, this is a surprisingly balanced stealth action game for 2003. And better yet, while gunplay isn't the best, it still feels far more refined than in Mafia, particularly since headshots actually get the job done in this game. Better yet, despite using a checkpoint system just like Mafia, the game also allows you to save at any time, just in case. The checkpoint placement is good enough though, so if you get too immersed and forget to save, the game typically saved not that long ago. But the game isn't perfect. You see, while the Mafia engine supports detailed textures, massive levels and the respectable character count, 
The lighting was weak even for the time. As a result, while your light meter tells you you're invisible, in actuality, your character is simply hugging a wall, in broad daylight. Modifying the brightness slider doesn't help much, as you'll simply be unable to distinguish anything afterwards if you turn it too far down. It also doesn't help that roughly half the missions take place during the day. Early 2000s stealth games weren't quite technically advanced enough to pull off convincing lighting, but due to the engine choice, it's particularly noticeable in Chameleon. And while it could be argued that the locations you sneak in are realistically populated by proto-humans, it still demands a massive suspension of disbelief since you're literally sneaking in broad daylight just a few meters away from other soldiers. Luckily, the sound is better. Much better. While a big chunk of the soundtrack is atmosphere fodder, the good stuff is really good. I literally got shivers down my spine upon first playing the game and in Moldova. Sadly though, otherwise the weapon effects aren't always appropriate. And it's clear the translation was done on a tight budget sometimes. Not to mention that in some missions, the sound balance is just wrong. But otherwise the soundscape is more than adequate. And in all other mechanical aspects, Chameleon is a winner. Before every single mission you have the ability to pick and choose equipment, including accessories. It's not the most in-depth and the defaults are usually fine, but it's one of those small things that really adds to the experience. You can peek around corners and if you do get spotted, you can still peek out of cover to shoot instead of fully exposing yourself. You have all the abilities one would find in a cover shooter, but portrayed in a more organic manner. Another neat twist is that whenever you arm yourself, your character doesn't automatically bring up the gun, but instead keeps it at the ready. To enter the firing stance, you need to press the action button. Then you can shoot, but your movement speed is heavily restricted to preserve accuracy. Your accuracy is also dependent on your stance, as you can crouch and go prone. You can also enter first person for maximum accuracy, and of course, select the firing mode on the right weapons. The developers really did think of everything. The controls and systems take some getting used to, but once you get used to the system, the authenticity is unmatched, particularly since you can also holster weapons completely. Another cool aspect is that if you're caught without a gun, you won't be shot at by all enemies as some will try to make you comply. Whereas if you start a shootout, bullets will start flying from all directions, as per your request. Non-lethal takedowns are an option as well thanks to your taser and of course you can hide the bodies which react satisfyingly to the environment through the use of ragdoll physics. So if you can overlook certain aspects, you will be rewarded with excellent, if somewhat linear, level design and an intriguing story. In fact, the more you play the game, the more you'll wonder why it never made it outside the Slavosphere. You'll be sneaking past the Albanian army, Moldavian soldiers, you'll sneak into an Argentinian submarine. You even get to visit Baltimore and see what it was like before it got black. On reflection, perhaps it was better off blacked. Then you get to Lebanon and look for a general, only to find a wounded soldier, and then he tells you where the general is. Then, how can I get to the underground now? Israelis are everywhere. Israelis are everywhere. Oh. Oh, so that's why the game never made it outside the Slavosphere. 
Fun fact! Did you know that Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow also has a mission where you have to eliminate an Israeli agent? For whatever reason, that game also isn't readily available for purchase on PC, despite the rest of the series being readily available without exception. But I'm sure that's just a coincidence. You see, the game references the Israel-Lebanon conflict, which is particularly notable as it's one of the few Middle Eastern conflicts where Israel received no direct support from the US. The result? A literal Shoah. Although not specifically mentioned anywhere, I suspect that upon seeing the Lebanon missions, most publishers pussied out, and thus the game only received its Slavic distribution out of pity more than anything, as it's very likely that Illusion Softworks used one of their connections to publisher Tsenega to help the game at least see the light of day. Thus, whether directly or indirectly, it should make sense who to blame. Say it with me, everyone. Fucking j So, in conclusion, if you can get a hold of a copy of the game, install it without breaking your computer, and excuse the rather generous definition of stealth, you're in for a truly outstanding, unique, and challenging experience. A worthy competitor to Splinter Cell indeed. Nine headshots out of ten. Thank you for watching.